Um, when I was little, I did not like words. I hated words. I had no mental impairment. I was completely normal. Back in the States, I was a little girl with bushy hair. And my mother had this thing with me. She said, I want you to read books. But for me, books were like, they had these words in them, like monsters running be behind me. And I hated them. To me, the most effective and memorable and comprehensible book was the most colorful one. This brings me to the crux of my talk. Ironically enough, I never took art as an academic pursuit. I never studied art on a professional level. But I realized how powerful a crayon, a pencil, can be in terms of enlightening and educating people, concepts. You might be thinking, how on earth can you teach a kid about algebra by using a crayon? You'll be surprised to know that at least 8 to 10 children from the age of 5 to 11 have an issue with words. Letters are not attractive to children at that age, which is why how many of you think that your books from the childhood were the most colorful? And when you grew up, books got less colorful, uglier, thicker, with more letters, and you kept thinking, I, I'm not going to study this, whatever, and I'm, then you're gone. Which is why you can't let your parents blame you for being so against studying. Remember when you were little? Okay, this is what a book looks like to me. How do, how do I learn something when I keep looking at these jumbles all over? When we were little, as soon as you think the letter A, what do you think of? Oh my God, look at that. That's me with my bushy hair again. And I kept thinking, how does this work? This is associative memory. A child thinks like that. For a child, every word has an image. When you think of boring, you think of something dull. You might think of an old person, no offense, OK? But we think of old people. We think of grandpa, boring, dull, stale. That's how associative memory works. And if you use this trick in education, you can teach so many things simply by drawing a concept. I started teaching when I was 18. I taught fourth graders in Sergoda. And remember we wrote this essay, My Best Friend? I hated that essay so much because I never had one. Um, OK, my best friend. Now, when I was teaching them, I said, write an essay on your best friend. And the same thing came from 45 different kids. Although I have many friends, but my best friend is. And I'd look at them, and I'd think, no, you have a best friend who's different from the other people. Get another essay. And this is an essay to me. He have many blah. He will blah when he blah. And there's a scribbly scrabbly over there, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. That was boring. You know, and my, my students would think, Teacher, what are we going to write about my best friend? This is how we write it. And I thought, no. Draw your best friend. They drew it. Every best friend was different. I said, draw what he likes, what he wants to be when he grows up. What are his parents like? OK? That, those are scary parents, I'm sorry. But yeah. Now, I said, now that you've drawn your best friend, look at that picture and then write that picture down. And they did it. Every essay was different. His best friend liked basketball, pizza, people playing. He wanted to be a, a very ugly pilot with that plane. And his parents, there they are, without eyes. But see, this is creativity. I didn't care if the essay said, my coolest friend with a disfigured F, OK, with wrong punctuation. What mattered to me was that he was not afraid to tell me that he had an unconventional essay on my best friend. Moving on forward, I have a small question, and you have to be honest. I'm not going to judge you, promise. And you have to raise your hands, because I'm a teacher. Now, the thing is, the question is, how many of you read at least two or three pages at night before going to bed to yourself? See, I didn't, even put, I didn't complete my question. OK, see, this is what we do in our, in our education system. We have every answer in our head. And before the teacher completes the question, we're like, oh, I know that. OK? I already know that. But honestly, how many of you actually do read to yourself, to your sibling, to your children, to anybody at night? OK, come on. That's great. What happens is that in order to bring a change in our education system, we're not asking for a revolution. We're not asking for a huge alteration. 
you can start at your very home. If you can read ABCD, if you can make words, you can bring a change. Read books. But then the question is, how do I find a book that's interesting enough? I have ADD, which you don't. But many people use this you know, excuse in front of me. They say, hey, my attention span, not good. That excuse can be fixed. You need to read books, and you need to understand concepts from a funnier and more colorful way. Now, the next question is, how many of you can actually draw? Great. And those who can't, remember this guy? Stickman. How many of you drew this guy on your desks, walls, on your teacher's pages as a form of revolt, saying, hey, hey I hate you, dude. I'm going to make my stickman. If you can draw this loyal stick man, you can draw anybody. For a child, there is no concept of perfection. When we grow up, we start thinking in degrees. You need to be proud and confident enough to draw a concept, whatever it is. In that case, you might be thinking, how do I draw algebra? I know some people in Yale who happen to be my friends, and they draw concepts of algebra, of geometry, by making snakes caterpillars, and worms. Who could, have you know, who could have thought that? But they do it. If you have the creativity, which every one of you does, you need to put it on to paper. And the third question is, oh, there you go, Bob the Poppy. The third question is, how many of you actually have an enthusiastic take on writing? This is when hands stay down, and that's OK. Our Pakistani education system, and I've studied in it because I remember some teachers being very strict about it, we take creativity as a threat. We don't like questions. Remember when we asked a question in class, our teachers shunned us? What we need to do is change that. We need to make our education more colorful. We need to bring art into our books. Draw concepts. Read out to children. Write to children. The thing is, at the end of the day, if you can change one life, you've done enough. See, this is, this is my friend. I'm sorry I ruined her lips. Um, this is Azmat Khan. She works for CBS in America. And she asked me, she said, Marion, how can you change the education system with MS Paint and pencils? I said, I can. And I have. The thing is, when you go home today, remember the essay, My, my Country? How many of you have written that country, oh, that essay? I have. And it was the same thing. Go home today, write the same essay in a spunkier, funnier, or maybe, let's say, satirical way. I don't care about geography. We already know we have four provinces. What you have to do is you need to start writing and putting it out to the world. People think about revolution in Pakistan, and they think of burning buildings and bringing a change. You don't need to do that. All you have to do Anna, how many people do we have here right now? An estimated number. 250 people. That's a big number. Each one of you go home, try to find a kid, not even a kid, an old person, and try to change their perception about things by using art. You'll have 250 different people changed. And that's all you need to do to bring a change in Pakistan.